So when we're trying to size our systems, when we're trying to understand the scale of the mechanical system that we're really talking about here, we're going to have the transmission issues, the infiltration issues, and the ventilation issues. And when we're trying to put all that together, uh, we're going to start to see that our transmission uh, is going to be a series of different uh, wall assemblies, floor assemblies, uh, roof assemblies, foundation wall assemblies. There's going to be a whole bunch of these as different uh, numbers that we're going to add together. But each one of them is going to start with the U value times the area of that particular wall assembly or roof assembly, whatever it is, times the delta T, the difference in temperature from the target temperature we're shooting for and the design temperature in that kind of worst case scenario outside. So uh, that uh, in the Minnesota example, uh, where it might be minus 20 uh, and our target temperature is say 68, uh, that means we have a delta T of approximately 88 degrees. Uh, so that tells us that we need to uh, be uh, putting a lot of heat energy into that heating system in order for it to balance out uh, the, the loss of heat through those walls, through the transmission, through the roof assembly, through the wall assembly, etc. So the U, remember, is the same as 1 over the R. It's the inverse of the R value. So the R is representing the resistance of the heat flow. The U is representing uh, the transmittance, uh, how, how the coefficient of transmittance, how it's going to let the heat flow go through. So how it's going to let the heat flow go through times the area of that particular uh, wall system or whatever it is times the uh, difference in temperature. And that's going to give us a total heat loss for that particular wall assembly. And then we would do it for all the wall assemblies, all the floor assemblies, all the foundation assemblies, all of those different things. We'd get them all, we'd add them all up, uh, and it would give us an overall transmission number. Now, remember that mostly this is done by area, by these different wall assemblies and floor assemblies and roof assemblies, etc. But there's a few things, slab edge, for example, where it's done by unit length. The way that heat is lost from a slab on grade is through the edge of the slab. And so they just put a um, unit length number on it. Uh, and so you just multiply that number times the actual uh, distance of the perimeter uh, around that slab. And so there's a couple of other examples like that. Of Not everything falls exactly into the uh, wall assembly area per square foot type situation, but most of it does. And so you add up all those numbers and that would give us our total heat loss for the transmission in BTUH. Uh, and then same thing with the infiltration. So this is where we have the cracks and all of that and air is coming in and when air pushes its way in, it means some of the conditioned air is finding its way out. There's a couple different ways to do this. One is called the crack estimation method. The other is called the air change method. Um, the crack estimation method is a little more old school uh, and kind of fits a little better uh, with kind of older buildings or situations where you're kind of mixing new construction with old construction, something like that. Um, air change method is more just kind of a general understanding and certain kinds of buildings there's going to be an approximate amount of an air change in a certain type of room that we just know is going to happen by the sheer fact that air will infiltrate through and so it's a way of thinking of it as an air change per volume of room uh, versus the crack method where the crack I'm actually adding up might be around the windows and then around the doors and then at special seams that we know are likely to be places where air is going to be able to infiltrate. So I literally add up the length of cracks that I imagine, we don't necessarily know they're there, but we imagine they're there, uh, and add those up and then I give a multiplier number per linear foot of crack. Uh, or I think about it as a sort of volume of air moving in uh, and a, a equal volume of air, of conditioned air moving out. And so therefore, how much of an impact would that make? Uh, like I said, newer buildings tend to be a little tighter. Uh, some buildings are better built than others. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, kind of an art of the process here. You're sort of adjusting to what you think is likely to be the case, knowing the construction, knowing the age of the building, knowing the quality of the contractors, knowing the level of detailing that the drawings got to. Uh, there's a whole series of different ways that, that might in 
impact uh, the idea of infiltration. So this is one of those uh, things that takes a little bit of uh, adjusting, but you're going to adjust it to a point where you then feel comfortable, and then you're going to do a calculation, and that calculation is going to lead you to some BTUH. So we've now got a couple of those numbers. We don't always have the ventilation in the mix. Uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, but uh, the more that we know that we're going to need fresh air, the more that we know uh, that that fresh air is not likely to be preconditioned in any way. So uh, if we know that's going to be the case, then we would have to make up that heat loss. And so that's going to also give us some BTUH. So we're going to get each of these individual numbers, and then we're going to add them together in order to understand what our total heat loss is per hour. So that's going to give us how much heat that system needs to produce. Now remember, these are all based on a specific delta T. So that's going to be how much that heating system needs to produce at that worst case scenario in order to maintain the building at 68 degrees or whatever our design temp was. We could choose a higher design temp. It just means the system's going to have to work harder on those cold days. Uh, so if it uh, got colder outside than what we were expecting uh, for whatever reason. There's a climate change issue or it was just in a particularly cold year uh, and it was say 10 degrees colder. Well then the expectation is well your system wasn't really designed to be able to go that much uh, uh, colder and so it would probably dip below our design temp. But the expectation is that wouldn't happen very often. You're using one of the really cold temperatures uh, in average over the years, so you're probably going to be pretty close to the coldest temperature of the year, maybe even the coldest temperature of the year. So uh, it probably won't happen too much, but occasionally it might not be quite powerful enough uh, to keep the system uh, up for, uh, keep the system at the target temperature uh, always. But the idea is that you're really aiming towards that kind of worst case scenario, generalized worst case scenario, uh, so that it can handle that. But that means it's oversized for really all the other days. So you don't want to just start throwing factors of safety on, because if you're throwing factors of safety on and saying, well, let's make it 50% more uh, stronger than, than the system that you know, it came out to when we did the calculation, just to be careful. We want to make sure our clients uh, get, you know, ni stay nice and toasty warm even on those coldest of days. But remember, that means the system is already acting inefficiently most of the year because it doesn't need to be as uh, powerful a system uh, in the spring and in the fall as it did in the winter. So it's already acting inefficiently during those seasons that if I make it act inefficiently in the winter, that means it never is acting efficiently and we are actually reducing our uh, ability to get this system to work efficiently and at a low cost. Uh, it's also going to make the uh, systems ch uh, turn on and off uh, regularly and that's going to make them um, last less long. So we're going to have uh, issues. We want to keep it as close to our design temp as we can. Uh, we don't want to oversize uh, these systems. We want to keep it fairly reasonable. Uh, but just hitting that worst case scenario, it's already unreasonable for most of the year. So that means we really don't want to make it uh, even more uh, uh, inefficient uh, at the winter, at the sort of worst scenario spot. So that's why we're aiming towards a cold day, one of the really coldest days, but we're not trying to go way beyond that. It's okay if it drops a few degrees on the absolutely worst day. Uh, it's okay if you can kind of get through that system, uh, that cold front or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but eventually it'll be back into the normal range and then it'll be acting more efficiently. So we have these three different ways. We're adding them all together. We're getting the BTUs out of all of those. We're understanding what the total BTU loss is, and therefore that is the total BTU uh, per hour amount that our heating system needs to supply in order to withstand that design temperature target uh, on that design temperature coldest day. Obviously, the same thing is true when we're talking about cooling uh, in the summer. It just reverses all those numbers. Uh, this is the way that we start to size those systems.